morning. Good morning and welcome to Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here and we really mean that. And whenever I say you are welcome here, I mean that you are welcome here whether you are gathered here in person um, at 6th and Daniel or if you've joined us online. And I know that we have lots of folks with us on Zoom this morning and lots of folks on um, Facebook Live as well. And I would invite you, no matter where you are, uh, if you're on social media, to check in and share that you're here today so that folks know um, that there is a place um, that would welcome them fully into the love of God. So we are continuing a, a worship series in this epiphany season, uh, the season that surrounds us with uh, the wisdom of the stars, um, which has to do with a bunch of epiphanies that I had while I was on sabbatical. If you're new to our congregation, then maybe you don't know um, that over the fall, I was on a 100-day sabbatical. And so each Sunday during the epiphany season, I'm going to be talking about one theme that arose during those 100 days. And today, we're going to talk about how we are connected to creation. And I have a few stories to share with you and a couple of pictures, too. I want to thank John Aline for being our liturgist this morning and for our musicians for leading us um, with such gorgeous music today. And friends, I want to welcome you to worship. Um, and who are we as I welcome all of us? We are young and old and middle-aged. We are gay and straight and in between. We are uh, street smart and college educated. Some of us can't pay our bills and some of us have more than enough to share. Who are we? We are the body of Christ together and together we worship. Welcome to worship. Good morning, please join us for the call to worship. We have come to this holy place to worship God, yet sanctuary is not always built by human hands. Everywhere I go is sanctuary, every place a time to worship God. When we live as if this planet and all creation, even ourselves are a sanctuary, a holy place full of the creator's presence, we walk differently upon this earth. 
We are always on sacred ground. Let us move with reverence through all creation. Let us enter every holy place to worship our creator. As we gather for worship this morning, O Holy One, we trust that you, Emmanuel, are with us. Open our hearts, renew our minds, strengthen our hands, fortify our feet in this time of worship. We pray and we praise your holy name. Amen. moment in worship when we share signs of peace with each other. And today I would invite you just to rise where you are in body or spirit to turn to one another and to share signs of peace. And uh, if you're on um, Zoom or on Facebook to share signs of peace in the chat or the comments, peace be with you. Peace, 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 peace. Everybody turn around and look at the camera and say, peace, peace. Thank you. So I want to invite uh, the kids to come up. I know that there are a few of you. Hello. Um, we're going to look at the screen today. And this screen, I know there are multiple screens. Oh my gosh, this one. Um, so here's the thing. Oh, first, let's all look at our thumbs. I don't have the bucket, but we're gonna look at our thumbs anyway. See those lines on your thumb? The only person in all of history to ever have those lines on a thumb. You are special and unique and you have skills and gifts and talents and you can learn new things. And what's the best thing for you to do in the world? Is it for you to be exactly like your brother? No, what about you? What about you to be just like your sister? No. Should you be like Leo? No. You should just be who? Yourself. It's the best thing that you can do. Um, and so I want you to, every time you look at those lines on your thumb, I want you to remember that there are things that only you can do in the world. The best thing that we can do is to figure out what those things are and how we can help serve um, Serve other people to make the world a more loving, kind, and gentle place, and then go do it, okay? 
remember that. Um, today, I wanted to show you some pictures that I took while I was on sabbatical. And I just thought we could talk about them. And you could tell me what you see, and I could tell you some things that I see. What? Do you remember that picture? Where did I take that picture? I did. I took this picture. Have you guys ever been to Turkey Run? Yeah? There's a state park over in Indiana. No, it's okay. Uh, I saw this little red thing over way away and I went over to look at it. And then whenever I got close to it, will you look at that? What does it look like? Say that again. <laughs> it is a mushroom, a mushroom and a brain. It totally looks like a brain, doesn't it? It's really interesting. It's all like webby and interesting. What do you think? Oh, that's interesting. If you zoomed in on your skin. Yeah. Do you want to flip to the next one? Oh, now look at that one. Isn't that interesting? This one is, it's a different color, right? It's yellow. And it's sort of, you know what it reminded me of? When I've made certain kinds of cookies that you roll in sugar and then you put them in the oven whenever you do, like the sugar crust kind of breaks apart. What? Tell me. Oh. oh, that it looks like snow over an igloo. <laughs> a bagel with a strange amount of cream cheese. That's delightful. Oh, sure. So put the bagel in the oven with the cream cheese, and it might look like this. Set on a bed of clover. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was really interesting, the colors next to each other. David, you want to go to the next slide? Oh, okay. Now, can I tell you about this one? While I was on sabbatical, I went to this, um, this retreat center and college over in, in Terre Haute, Indiana called St. Mary's of the Woods. And I was taking a big, long walk. And I noticed this was a really big mushroom under a tree. And so I stopped to look at it. And then, you want to go to the next picture? And then I noticed that it wasn't alone, that it had a friend and it had another friend and it had another friend. And when I stepped back, I realized that there was this circle of mushrooms that was under this tree. I wish you could see Violet's face. She was like, what? It's really cool. I looked it up. People call that a fairy ring. I thought it was so interesting because you know, this little buddy here, He's actually connected to this one and to this one. Anytime you see fungus or mushrooms out in the world, they're, they're connected to each other. Wanna to go to the next one? Isn't that pretty and kind of gross, but mostly pretty, right? What do you think? Oh, it looks like a cooked lemon. That's a really good description. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, kind of looks like a potato. Yeah, I really liked how the pine cone was all sharp and spiky and the mushroom looked spongy and soft. I thought that was really interesting to see those two textures together. Wanna to go to the next one? Okay, so I wanna tell you a little bit about this picture. I was at St. Mary's and I was walking around. They have alpacas. I'd gone and said hi to the alpacas. They have horses and I'd gone and said hi to the horses. And there was a horse that would always come over and see me every day. Um, and then I was walking across this bridge and I looked down uh, below the bridge and there was this, um, 
just a, this area with a bunch of grass that was between these two trees. And I saw this big white thing on a log. This picture is actually pretty close up. I was really far away from it, probably from here to the back of the sanctuary. So I decided to walk down into this little gully and I almost fell down, but I didn't. So I was super proud of myself. And then I got down there and I made my way over and this big white thing that I thought was like, well, I didn't actually know what it was, but then I got close to it. Do you see this? How it kind of looks like coral? All of these are these little individual um, like tentacles that sort of looked like a sea anemone to me. I thought it was so interesting. What? Well, it looks like a snowed over forest. Oh, I love it. It just was kind of magical. And this might be a lion's mane mushroom, but I'm not sure. Um, there, were days when I, there were days when I wanted to learn more about the science behind all of this, and other days when I just wanted to look at them because they were gorgeous. I think we're allowed to do both things. Want to flip to the next one? Oh, there it is, really close up. Look at that, isn't that cool? Especially against the bark. Next one. So there were just mushrooms everywhere. They were everywhere. And you know what? Whenever I was a little kid in the spring, we would go mushroom hunting for a particular kind of mushroom called a morel. I didn't know that all these other mushrooms popped up in the fall. I just didn't know because I've spent way too much time inside in the fall in my life. So I had such a good time um, just being wowed by all of the color and the texture. What? A red puffer fish that's kind of puffed up. Yeah, doesn't it? What are you gonna say? Mm -hmm. Isn't it cool how your imagination can just kind of go wild looking at all of these? Go ahead, David. This one is just right down the street from my house. In this, there's this tunnel of pine trees that I like to walk down. And there's this, there's this little mushroom in the midst of all the giants. And that's what it looks like from the top. Tell me. It looks like a fruit tart. Doesn't it though? But I would not eat that, just to be clear. <laughs> Tell me. Oh, like a fried egg? Oh, that's fascinating. What do you think? Mm hmm. A toadstool. Are we ready for the last picture? Okay, don't do it yet. Oh, you did it. That's okay. <laughs> so it took, so I took, I took so many pictures of mushrooms while I was on my sabbatical. I won't show them all to you or to you. Um, but I, I, I decided on my last day at St. Mary's of the Woods that I, I wanted to see, I had been staring at all these mushrooms. I wanted to see what maybe mushrooms saw whenever they looked up at me, if they do that sort of thing. So I took this picture. And it was interesting to me to think of what life must be like from that perspective, right? Looking up instead of looking down. Tell me, last thing. Yeah, don't they though? This has been such a fun conversation. All I wanted to do this morning was show you some pictures and have us talk about them because I wanted to hear what you all saw and, and how these things made, um, made your imagination kind of spin around. 
Um, I do hope that you'll remember one thing, and that was the thing about how those mushrooms were all connected to each other. You know, last week we talked about being part of a community. Um, and I think that's an important lesson that we can learn from things like this out in, in creation. Um, we're all connected um, in ways that we don't even understand sometimes. Hey, thanks for coming up today. There is no Sunday school today, but Julie has bags for you. Um, and so you can go, go. <laughs> and she's got activity bags for you. Thanks. Thanks, you guys. Whether we take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, let us listen now for the meaning it might hold for us on this day. A sacred reading from Isaiah 55. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And, the, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that you do not know shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And shall it be to the Lord for a memorial, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. We conclude the sacred reading with this prayer. May the Spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. After the sermon, we will pray together and offer up our joys and concerns. Your prayer requests will be offered aloud, whether you are sitting with us here in the sanctuary or worshiping with us remotely, you are invited to add your joys and concerns to the prayer list. Go to community-ucc.org slash pray. This is a Google form. Or you can scan the QR code found here in the bulletin. Additionally, there are prayer cards on the table at the back of the sanctuary that you may fill out and hand to the usher. Before the 
We begin this morning with a poem. Its title is Do Not Ask Your Children to Strive by William Martin. Do not ask your children to strive for extraordinary lives. Such striving may seem admirable, but it is the way of foolishness. Help them instead to find the wonder and the marvel of an ordinary life. Show them the joy of tasting tomatoes, apples, and pears. Show them how to cry when pets and people die. Show them the infinite pleasure in the touch of a hand and make the ordinary come alive for them. The extraordinary will take care of itself. As we prepare for the word preached, would you join with me your hearts and minds in prayer? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I'm over at St. Mary's College, staying in one of their hermitage cabins, which are set off apart from everything else on a, on a tiny lake. Uh, and I'm there for the, for the second of two visits during my sabbatical. Took a long walk on the campus. And just after I saw that, that fairy ring of mushrooms around a tree, I turned a corner and saw um, in this lawn, six or seven giant yellow mushrooms that sort of came up like this and, and had waves in them and had um, many parts. And it was just astonishing looking. It looked, it looked like something that you would go to an art museum and pay lots of money to see, but there it was in the middle of this lawn between a classroom building and a dorm in the cafeteria. And so I wandered over and got out my phone and started taking pictures, and really looking closely from every angle. Have you ever watched somebody take pictures of mushrooms? It is an inelegant thing to take pictures of things that are like down on the ground, right? So I'm, 
the grass was a little wet and I'm a little bit of a wuss and I didn't want to get my clothes dirty. And so I'm like leaning down and I'm taking pictures and I'm looking and I'm coming over here and I'm like turning my camera different ways. And, and I'm spending, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, a long time doing this. And I notice out of the corner of my eye, that there's a, a man uh, in a maintenance truck pulls in this uniform, gets out, takes something into this dorm, and then he comes back. And he does this like five times. And each time he's walking, as I'm like bending down and, you know, taking the thing, he's walking like this. And then he comes back. And the last time he walks by, he stops and he says, Are those mushrooms? And I'm like this when he asks, and I'm like, aren't they cool? They are. Aren't they so cool? And he's like, uh-huh. And then he just keeps walking. It's an inelegant thing <laughs> to be that excited about things like mushrooms. But I think, I really do think, that Alice Walker was right. Alice Walker, who wrote The Color Purple, who says, and I quote, I think it pisses God off if you walk past the color purple in a field somewhere and don't notice it. But it's not the whole quote. It's important for us to read the whole thing. I think it pisses God off if you walk by the color purple in a field somewhere and don't notice it. People think pleasing God is all God cares about, but any fool living in the world can see it always trying to please us back. And it's true not just of the color purple, but of anything that captures our imagination and wraps us up in wonder and marvel in the natural world. I think Alice Walker was right, that creation is always trying to please us back, to love us back, to love God back. Which makes me wonder then, that what if love your neighbor as yourself means not just our human neighbors, but it also means our neighbors who are in the mountains and the hills and the plains and the prairie, here where we live, in the trees and in the rocks themselves, who Jesus said will sing and will shout. My sabbatical wanderings sent me outside often. Now, I should say that this is actually a practice that I picked back up when COVID started and all of our lives got shut down and suddenly I had no plans, an empty calendar. And so I've gladly continued walking in the woods walking over to Japan house and walking just down the block to that, to that cathedral of pine trees that exists there. And it's interesting to me, like I told the kids, I had no idea, and I feel so silly for saying it, but it's true. I had no idea that there were so many different kinds of gorgeous uh, mushrooms and fungi that popped up in the fall. Because even though I spent so much time outside as a kid, it seems like every year as a grown up, I filled my life with other things instead of going outside and paying attention to nature. So when I started seeing yellow toadstools and red mushrooms and those beautiful yellow things that look like sculpture on the lawn. I started 
reading books about mushrooms and listening to podcasts about mushrooms and paying attention to blog posts about mushrooms. And then one day I stumbled upon this. So there's a podcast called Fungi Town. Won't you take me to Fungi Town? Right, you get it, you get the joke. And the podcast host was talking with um, a couple of folks who run a thing called the Nanotopia Project. I have to get their names right. Uh, Tosca Torin and Andre uh, Gravel. And they've collaborated in this artistic endeavor. And they run this, like I said, this thing called the Nanotopia uh, Project in Canada. What they do is that they record biorhythms. So they have this um, biosonification process where they hook up electrodes to different kinds of fungus and to mycelium. And then they record the electronic impulses of the mycelium and that gets translated into music. If you listen to the podcast, you'll hear specifically the music that's made by blue oyster mushrooms and um, the lion's mane mushroom, which we saw on the screen earlier. They use a MIDI and a synthesizer to do this. And these electronic impulses are translated on a, a 12 note scale. And yes, it's true that these two artists interpret, um, they interpret the, the notes, but the rhythm and the pattern that comes directly from the mycelium. Now, they record the electronic impulses of all kinds of organic matter and living things, of, uh, animals and fish and all kinds of plants and people. They note that every sort of species sort of has a kind of a regular pattern and a rhythm, but then they say, and I quote, the rhythmic patterns of people are all over the place, except, except one day when they hooked their uh, electrodes up to a, a gentleman. And the way Andre tells the story is he said, as, as soon as they started recording the rhythm, he and Tosca looked at each other with excitement and amazement. This man's electronic rhythms were the most like that of mushrooms they had ever seen. The similarities were undeniably there. And later, later that they found, they found out, this man had spent seven years as a monk. So he had spent seven years of his life praying and praising God and tuning his very being to be able to be in keeping with the rhythm of the spirit that pulses through the world. Just as you and I sit here today, that is true. That made me say, oh my, maybe the ancients knew something when they said, oh, this is bulletin. Maybe the ancients knew something when they said, for you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song. Maybe the ancients knew that that's what they were doing all along. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. There's a deep connectedness in creation that shall not be cut off. And we are part of it. We are part of it. If only we will have the eyes to see and the ears to hear it. There's a deep rhythm that happens the law of creation, and we are part of it. If only we would have the ears to hear it and the eyes to see it. 
had a different ending for the sermon, but when I heard Aaron play the prelude, I thought, oh, there's a different thing to say here. Did you and I talk about the prelude that you were going to play? We didn't, did we? Nope. There was a whole draft of the sermon where I was going to sing the song to you that Aaron played. Right? There's a deep rhythm present in creation. If only we have the eyes to see it and the ears to hear it and the willingness to sing along. Amen. The prophet Isaiah says, arise, your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We are told that we shall see and be radiant. Our hearts shall thrill and rejoice and abundance shall come to us. In light of this epiphany, which is for the good of the whole community, we are invited to give. Out of this abundance, we give the ministries of compassion, justice, and grace that grow out of this church are only made possible because of your giving. May God bless all that we give. May God bless the giver. In order to give to the ministry and mission of Community UCC, please visit community-ucc.org and click donate. If you are worshiping here in the sanctuary, you may place offerings in the offering plates as you leave the sanctuary. This is the time in the service where we share the joys and concerns of our congregation, friends, and community. If you have a prayer request to add to our list, there is still time to do that now using the Google form, or if you are in the sanctuary, you can find yellow prayer request cards at the back of the sanctuary. Please also take a look at the ongoing prayer requests in the yellow sheet of your bulletin. Join me now in prayer as we hold the community's prayers in our hearts. As I read these prayers aloud, please join me in the prayer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Carrie offers prayer for comfort for her high school friend, Danny's family, students, and close friends after his sudden passing yesterday. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Allison asks for prayers of safety and healing for her friend Terry's mom, Donna, who was badly hurt in a car accident caused by a drunk driver. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Nancy has prayers of support as she starts a new journey. On Wednesday, February 2nd, she starts training to be a forest therapy guide. May I find balance and joy on this path. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Kathy asks for, prayer for prayers for healing for her sister-in-law's mother, Claire Sharpless, 
who's been readmitted to the hospital with ongoing heart problems. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Our time of prayer this morning, we do so by um, revisiting uh, a prayer that I've shared with you in the past from the Well is Deep Prayers to Draw Up Living Water by Virginia Rickman. Friends, as all of um, our joys and concerns are held here in this sacred space, let us be of one heart and mind as we offer our prayers to God. God among us, God within us, God beyond us, all we know of you calls out for our praise. We praise you for beauty, for the beauty of the earth breathes forth at your command, and for beauty distilled, crafted, sung by human minds, hands, and voices. Beauty itself declares your praise. Holy One, we praise you for January days, white and blue shadowed, vaporous, crackling stiffly as cold fire. We praise you, for we have warm buildings, soft beds, hot coffee, and windows between us and the snow and the sunlight. Oh God, look tenderly on those who have no shield between them and winter. Open our eyes to those whose needs you have equipped us to meet. May we know only restlessness until we are moving in concert with your will. We praise you, God, for those particular people, ideas, and activities that you have given into our care. The passion we bring to love and work proclaims your praise. We praise you for memories, hard, soft as mother's hands, plain as grass, fanciful as flight, nestled in our hearts. We praise you, for we have snapshots, happy-eyed childhood, richly embroidered stories, persons to hold our hands. Oh God, gently embrace all of us who have no guard between them and horror. Open our arms to those whose pain we have the power to allay. May we know peace only as we contribute to the peace of those around us. Holy One, we praise you for children, dawn creatures unformed, hungry, insistent, trusting us for wisdom to a degree that is frightening. Take our love and good intentions. Let them be enough to counter our ignorance and failings. Help us to nourish well their bodies, their hearts, their minds, their spirits, that they may live fully as you intend. May their joy in life infect our hearts. Children's laughter shouts your praise. Holy One, we praise you for hope. Rugged and mountain high, horizon tinged and rooted deeply as oak. We praise you. For we have been given strong, valued foundations, long visioned heroes, fourth and fifth and sixth chances, resources to make choices. Compassionate God, hold close all who have no shelter from despair and open our hearts to those whose fears would be eased by the gift of our presence. May we view injustices with neither resignation nor a sense of futility, but with faith in your power to work through us to bring about the good. We seldom know what small need of ours may inspire another to dream and plan and work for justice. And this too, Holy One, is a marvelous work of yours. Therefore, praise all praise we offer to you, great God. Let songs of your goodness never cease. Let psalms of your faithfulness be sung forever.
In your holy name we pray. Amen. shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap trees of the field will clap their hands while you go out with joy. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. While you go out with joy and shout when you go. <laughs> oh, that was so good. Thank you so much. Friends, it's time for the commissioning of the community, that moment when we commission you to go out and be the church in the world. If you have an announcement today, I would invite you uh, to come up to the podium, um, to the lectern, that is. Today is our annual meeting. Um, yet again, because of COVID, oh gosh, we're not going to be downstairs for, uh, for our potluck. But we are going to gather today on Zoom. Um, folks who are worshiping with us on Zoom today, uh, you just click that same uh, address and you all too, uh, you, you have the address for today's Zoom annual meeting in your weekly email. Um, and so join us at one o'clock for that meeting. We have important business to, to discuss uh, about the ministry of our congregation, but also we have so much to celebrate. And we will do plenty of that today at, at one as well. So please join us. Um, on February 13th, I'm going to be uh, doing a worship service and, and message that day, which is about Star Wars stories. Um, there's something that happened that was really significant on my sabbatical that reminded me, or I should say, my Star Word helped me to get through that moment. Um, and I wonder if there are other folks who have had a significant star word experience over the past few years. A couple of you have already gotten in touch with me, but if you haven't yet, please let me know. I'd love to work with you a little bit before that service rolls around. And I don't have any guys yet. Um, so if you identify as a guy, um, maybe think of if you have a star word story that you could tell. Any other announcements today? Um, one note that Queering Faith has been moved to April 1st. It is not uh, an April Fool's joke. It really will happen on that day. Um, and uh, we're going to be bringing Reverend Ann Cansfield from Greenpoint uh, Reformed and United Church of Christ in New York City here. Uh, she's a pastor, the first, uh, the first female New York City Fire Department chaplain and the first openly LGBTQ um, New York City Fire Department chaplain, although she'll tell you that, that the guys say to her, they call her Father Anne, they say, because they're all Catholic, um, and she, they, they say to her, Father Anne, you're, you're not really the first one, but you know, you know, we know, we knew, but you're the first one who tells us that you are. Um, so she's coming here. Uh, on April 1st. And if you've not read her book, The Brave One, uh, we want to encourage everybody to read that. It's a fantastic book. It's a quick read. Ilsa has copies. If you're worshiping with us online, we will send you a book. 
Should they contact Carla? Oh, thanks. So you can find Ilsa's email in the yellow sheet and all of that is posted online. And if you just don't know what else to do, call Carla, she'll help you out. And Ilsa will ship you a book. Um, any other announcements? No, 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 okay. Uh, then I would invite you all to rise in body or spirit, please. Friends, go forth from this place knowing that God loves you so very much, that Jesus came to give us life and to give it abundantly, and that the Holy Spirit surrounds you this day and all days. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.